We've got a special edition of our listener mailbag. Your questions coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Lachlan Giants podcast, part of the Lachlan Podcast family, your team every day. I'm Patricia Train. A happy Friday to everybody. We are now one week into the six week break, the dead period in the NFL calendar, which means there's only five more weeks to go before the Giants ramp up for training camp. All right. And it is going to go fast. And we, of course, here on the Lachlan Giants podcast, we are on a summer schedule. We're coming to you Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And uh, as always, thank you for making us your first listen of the day or watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. Really appreciate it. And I promised that I would do a listener mailbag if I had enough questions. And originally I was planning to do an extra show on Thursday. I didn't quite have enough questions to do the show, but I do today. So I'm going to answer them. We have about 10 questions. Some of you squeezed in a couple questions along the way. So it's a little bit more. And that is what I'm going to do to send you off into the weekend. So again, thank you for tuning in. And let's get started with what we have on deck. All right. First question we have is from Rick. And he asks about the atmosphere and the vibe of the uh, new regime. From what I've been reading, it feels like they've been they're already closer and wouldn't stick and would stick together probably, I think is what you meant to say, through losses. And as a UK fan, do you think they were looking forward to coming here to play? All right, Rick, thank you. All the way from the UK. So thank you for writing in and for getting us started with a good question. The vibe that I got is that the entire building is energized and you know, there's different types of energy. There's that nervous energy that sometimes can work against you. And I think that nervous energy is what the previous coaching staff tried to manufacture or, or ended up manufacturing, actually. And then there's that, you know, that that natural energy that just comes with excitement and anticipation. So in a nutshell, the vibe is one or was one since they've they've since broken up and, and gone for, you know, the summer. The vibe was one where I think everybody was energized. Everybody could just, you know, it's kind of like when spring comes after a long winter, you throw open the windows and you inhale, you know, and you, and you feel the breeze and you inhale the fresh air and you see the buds on the, on the trees starting to, bo to bloom and whatnot. That's kind of what it was like. Um, a lot of guys, the body language was, was um, you know, more relaxed. I didn't get the sense that anybody was wa uh, walking on eggshells. So, um, yeah, a much different vibe and, and a better vibe, I think, from um, this coaching staff so far. Now, it's early. Obviously, they haven't played any games. They haven't hit any adversity. So we'll have to see how everybody responds when that comes up, because there will be losses. There will be some adversity that pops up. But um, I would say this past spring went about as perfect as, as you can expect, given the circumstances. So it was actually, it was quiet. It was drama free. You didn't have any, you know, nagging storylines and, and, you know, the early storylines about, you know, Kadarius, Tony, those got shut down pretty quickly. So it was a pretty peaceful and uneventful spring. And I think the players, you know, in their effort to learn about the, the new system, the new coaches and all that stuff, um, I think they appreciated that. I know I and the media appreciated that. So um, that's um, my response to that question. Now, as far as um, them looking forward to going to play in the UK, look, it's exciting. It's a different place. It's a road trip, but, you know, it's also a business trip for them. You know, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in Green Bay, it is a business trip. But I will tell you, tell you this, um, I believe the NFL – holds fan events, extra fan events when they have games overseas at the, in the UK. So I'm sure there's going to be a degree of enthusiasm 
to participate in them. You know, look, I don't, I don't want to speak to it for the team because, you know, that's the other Pat's job. Um, that's, I'm Pat Trainer, I'm not Pat Hanlon. So he's actually the spokesperson. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's exciting. It's an opportunity to play in front of different fans. Um, why not? I mean, London's a, a great city. Um, I know I've been there a couple of times in my life. I hope to go again this fall. Um, the people are wonderful, you know, the history and everything. I mean, look, I, I could easily spend a month in London just exploring the, the city and all it has to offer. But um, I would say, yes, there is some excitement about, you know, going over overseas. So uh, hope you enjoy them when they come overseas. And I hope the Giants get you a win, especially if that's what you want. So thank you for the question. All right. Up next, we have Joe De DeMarzo. Hey, Joe, what's going on? Long time no here, you know? Uh, so glad to see you back on my uh, my Twitter feed. Uh, Joe asks, does the camp and the Giants seem too loosey-goosey? All right, Joe, um, no, I don't, I wouldn't say the camp seemed too loosey-goosey. I have seen camps and practices that have been loosey-goosey. This isn't one. There is a sense of urgency, but there is also a sense of urgency for the task at hand. And I think that's what people need to understand the difference, right? So it was a teaching camp and a teaching camp is a little bit more um, flexible for lack of a better term than say a straightforward camp where, okay, guys, we got to get everything ready and we've got to get, you know, get ourselves ready for the first opponent. You, you're going to have mistakes you're going to have, you know, different things you're going to throw out versus different things you're going to keep. So I don't think it was loosey-goosey. The emphasis is where it needed to be. The players responded, responded well. They were rewarded with, obviously, you know, the third day of minicamp being canceled. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought the energy was fantastic. Um, it was spirited. They kept within the rules. All right. There wasn't, you know, any contact or anything that I think would draw the wrath of the NFL or the NFL PA. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, from the outside looking in, it was a successful camp. It was a drama free camp. It was a stress free camp. Um, and it was one that uh, the coaches obviously felt um, they got a lot done. So I take that as a plus. I take that as a win. All right. Thanks for the question, Joe. All right. Uh, Notorious Mo asks, um, do you think the secondary should be considered by committee as opposed to set cornerback one, cornerback two, and strong safety? Um, you know what? I think you're going to have your base defense like you always do, and then you're going to have sub packages. So really, that doesn't change. I mean, if that's your definition of by committee, yes, then that's what they're going to do. Um, that's what they've always done. They've always had, you know, a start, the starters in the base package. Then they have a different personnel grouping for the nickel, a different personnel grouping for the dime. You know, uh, I'm sure Wink Martindale's got some different personnel packages that he's got planned for, for different situations. So yeah, it's, it, it always is a committee. It's not like, you know, on offense where it's the same offensive line every time. You're going to change up the personnel in the defensive secondary to match up what you've got or what you're facing. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's what I see happening uh, there in the defensive secondary. Thanks for the question, Mo. All right, um, Akhil Gupta, who would be some veteran cornerback candidates that would fit well with Wink's design if the Giants had to look outside for help? Okay, Akhil, it's a little too early to answer that question because I think if there was somebody out there, the Giants would have signed them by now. Somebody who was affordable, I might add. Um, what I think is going to happen is they're going to roll with what they have for the summer. If they have injuries and if, or if the guys don't, you know, live up to expectations, there will be cuts made around the league and, in, and the giants will also be making cuts and therefore they will be clearing out additional cap space. So therefore um, right now, I think everybody's going to kind of stand pat and we're going to see how training camp goes. Um, again, if there's injuries or performance issues, 
then you're going to see guys that get cut around the league that will be added to the roster. So that's what I think is going to happen. So I can't really give you names right now because I don't know who's going to become available. Um, all I could say is some, if they were going to add somebody, they would have done it by now, which tells me, you know, they either can't afford who's left out there or there's nobody they feel would help them at this point. So I would say at this point, Akil, hold, um, hold on to that question. Maybe circle back with me when we do the mailbag, you know, right around the time the rosters have to be cut down to 53 and then we'll see who becomes available and, you know, where things stand. We might not even, might not even have to address the question depending on how things stand with this team. So, but thanks for writing in. Appreciate it. All right, Giant fans, we have more of your Twitter questions coming up in just a moment. All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. But first, betonline.net is the only place that offers the best information on the latest odds, contests, and player props for all your sports betting needs. No matter what sport you're into, betonline.net has you covered. Plus, they offer everything you need to know for live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. So head on over to betonline.net today to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. It's a Friday edition. We're doing a mailbag. I am Patricia Trena. And by the way, um, I usually do a mailbag on Giants country, but I'm not going to do one this weekend since I'm doing the mailbag here on Twitter, uh, on uh, not Twitter, on uh, YouTube. So if you're looking for the Giants country mailbag, it's just I'm not going to have enough questions to, to do another mailbag over there. So um, anyway. Uh, before we get back into your questions, we do have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so that we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. So this is your opportunity to tell us what you like and what you don't like about the Locked On podcast. So go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. Um, the, the survey won't take you very long and everybody that completes the survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. And thank you so much for your help. We appreciate you here at the Locked On Giants podcast and the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, let's get back to your questions. We're doing a Twitter mailbag. Um, all right, up next, we've got a question from Bosco underscore 1990. What's it going to take for Jones to even get a franchise tag? I'd say 3-1 touchdown to turnover ratio, 25 points per game and seven to nine wins, no credits for seven, 13, seven victories minimum. All right. Um, I think, all right, numbers are, are going to play a small factor, but they're not going to be the deciding factor. All right. Um, everybody wants to attach numbers to what it's going to take for Daniel Jones to get the franchise tag. Here's the bottom line. He's got to make better decisions. He's got to take better care of the ball. All right. There, there are going to be days where he's going to play really well and maybe the team loses because, you know, the defense didn't play well or maybe because somebody dropped a, a game-winning pass. And then how do you judge that? Do you say, oh, Daniel Jones didn't win or the Giants didn't win that game, so we can't give him credit for winning the game. That's why, you know, I can't stress this enough, guys. Don't try to attach numbers to Daniel Jones. What it's going to take is simple, smart decisions. Can he carry the team on his shoulders and go from being a game manager to a game winner? Can he take better care of the ball? Can he take control of that huddle and run that offense effectively? That's what's going to decide whether or not Daniel Jones is back. Not necessarily how many games he wins, not necessarily, you know, his pass completion uh, record. Because, you know, again, pass completion, you factor in drops. I think he's had something like 69 drops over his career. That's not on him. That's on his receivers. All right. So you, you can't really look at numbers. I don't think at any rate. Now, you know, if he goes and, and wins, you know, by himself, let's say he has, I don't know, five or six fourth quarter comebacks, that'll help. So, but you got to be careful with numbers overall, because it's just, it's just so hard to measure, to be honest with you. So, but thank you for the question. All right. Up next we have, um, let's see, 
Boondog Doggler three, I think it is, um, and wants to know. Let's assume, big assumption. Daniel Jones and Saquon both have good years. Jones throws for four thousand yards, twenty five touchdowns, twelve interceptions. Saquon has 1,700 all-purpose yards. Anyway, they try to resign both of them. Okay. My answer again with Daniel Jones is don't worry about the numbers. Worry about what I just said, which is basically, is he a game, you know, does he go from being a game manager to a game winner? With Saquon, all right, 1,700 yards, um, all-purpose yards. Here's the thing with Saquon. All right. He's a unique talent. I think we can all agree on that. But he's got to stay healthy. All right. And he can't be looking to be paid the sun, moon, and the stars. If he's going to come in and he's going to want to be paid like the top running back in the league, guess what? That ain't happening, folks. If he's willing to be reasonable, then yes, I can see the Giants maybe looking to work out a deal with him if he goes and he has a, a decent, you know, season. But that's a lot of ifs. All right. I don't think. You know, if you if, if all things work out, could I see the Giants trying to keep both Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley? I can, but the money has to work. All right, you cannot devote, you know, a big chunk of change to a running back, not when you've got your quarterback coming off his rookie contract. All right, so there is going to be a little bit of a balancing act because here's the other thing, folks. You got to remember, Andrew Thomas is going to be up for a renewal at some point. All right. I think this is his third year. So after this year, um, he will be eligible to redo his contract. If Joe Shane is, is true to his word about, you know, signing some of these guys who are part of the future early, there's a chance you might see Andrew Thomas get an extension, All right? So there's going to be things that are going to need to be addressed. You know, they're going to have to make a decision on Dexter Lawrence, um, you know, and, and I think Julian Love's contract's coming up. So there will be some other decisions that need to be made. And the, whatever cap space the Giants are currently projected to have now, that cap space is going to get eaten quickly. So the deals have to work for the Giants. They can't go spending, you know, crazy. Otherwise, you know what? They're going to they're gonna get themselves in cap hell again. So I would be careful with that. I mean, with Daniel's contract, I will say this. If they do something similar to what, Buffalo did with Josh Allen's contract where they have tiered guaranteed money, they can make it work. That's what I anticipate they will do. But if they do things the old fashioned way, the old Giants way, then I just don't see it happening. So, you know, there is a way financially they could do it with Daniel and with Saquon through tiered guaranteed money, which would protect them should those two players end up getting injured and not being available for any set number of time. That's what I would do. And, um, you know, it's a little too early, I think, to talk about it now. But um, maybe I'll, I'll do something in more detail. I'll illustrate um, either on a show or in an article. I'll illustrate what I'm talking about. But basically what I'm talking about is the Josh Allen contract model, which is just absolutely brilliant. And why the Giants weren't using that model, you know, for some of their other big signings, like the Leonard Williams signings, I have no idea. I would have done that in a heartbeat. But you know, I'm just a uh, content provider. I'm not a GM. I'm not a capologist. I'm just, you know, it's just my opinion. So, all right. Thank you for the question. Uh, all right. We've got a couple more, I believe. All right. Uh, yeah, we've got a couple more. So we'll get to those last remaining questions right after this. All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. But first, there's only one place to find what you need quickly for your car or truck, and that's at rockauto.com. Rock Auto has over 20 years of offering competitive pricing on thousands of parts for every make, model, and manufacturer. Check out their website today, and don't forget to write down Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know we sent you. rockauto.com, amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I am Patricia Trena. And uh, again, thank you for tuning in and listening or watching on YouTube. Um, we are on a summer schedule, which means we're doing three shows a week. We'll do extra ones as necessary. Don't worry, I won't leave you hanging. 
Um, or if I have a, you know, a series that I'm going to start or whatever, I'll, I'll get them in. Don't worry. I won't leave you hanging for long. So appreciate you listening and making us your first listen of the day, or if watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. Let's get back to the remaining questions we have in this week's mailbag. Mark Wise, uh, I'm sorry, M. Weisel writes, um, I am concerned that the Giants could waive Nick Gates as an injured, as they did with the Jake Ballard after the Super Bowl. Um, do you think they would do that? No, Mark, I don't, I don't see that happening. Look, I remember when the Giants waived Jake Ballard and what they did at the time is they had to waive him in order to sign. I think it was Norman Hand they were looking to sign um, and they thought they could slip him through to, um, to IR or, or pop or whatever at the time. Um, with Nick Gates, I don't see that happening. If they waive Nick Gates, it would have to be with an injury settlement and there is an injury protection waiver, which would cost them, assuming, of course, Nick Gates' agent was smart and, you know, exercised this waiver, it would cost the Giants up to $2 million. So really, they, I, I just don't see it happening. What I see happening with Nick Gates is he will start training camp on PUP. I believe he will continue on PUP. All right. Now, the difference between PUP in the season versus training camp. Training camp, you are considered active pup, which means you count against the 90-man roster. If you are still unable to pass a physical by the time the season starts, you get moved to inactive pup, and you don't count against the 53-man roster. You have to stay on inactive pup for, I think, it's six weeks, and then the team can reassess where you're at. And it's possible they keep him on pup all season long if he's not ready. So bottom line, Mark, no, I don't see the Giants waving Nick Gates. I, I don't think you have anything to worry about there. I would be stunned, absolutely stunned, if the Giants cut Gates. Um, they, you know, it's not even a salary cap savings or that much of a savings to be had by doing that. So just don't see that happening. So anyway, all right, we got two more from the same person, actually, Michael Bryant, who has um, a couple of questions. All right, so let's take one at a time here. With Shane and Dable at the helm, do you feel as optimistic as I do in the talent and the and direction we are going? Yes, I do. I like how they're, you know, how they're thinking. I like the approach that uh, Shane took, despite having his hands tied by a very bad salary cap situation, which um, right now is still pretty bad, despite the fact they have about six million in space. Um, I think considering how they, they built the roster, they did the best they could with the circumstances. So I absolutely feel good about the, um, the talent and the direction that this team has. All right. And your second question is, we know Dable has a rep roster. With that being said, I think you meant rep chart there, by the way. With that being said, do you think our rookies and prospects making strides in our system Oh, do you see, I'm sorry, do you see our rookies and prospects making strides in our systems, offense, defense, and special teams? All right, Michael, on that question, too soon to tell. It was a non-contact camp, no pads. It was a teaching camp, all right? Now, we could tell little things like technique. We could, we could judge based on the interaction with the coaches, who was getting extra instruction and who wasn't. Um, but as far as playing the game itself, you're not going to tell until training camp. So I would say this, you know, with the rep chart, that was more or less done to get the coaches an idea of how different packages might look in the summer. All right. So I wouldn't read too much into that as an evaluation tool, other than, like I said, to figure out what they're going to do with certain packages. But um, I think if you circle back with me after they start doing some padded practices, I can tell you who's making progress, who, who is standing out. I mean, you know, certain guys obviously stood out, you know, you could say Daniel Bellinger had a good spring, but you know, we didn't see him block, you know, you, you, people ask me about Evan Neal and how he looked, you know, the, his technique and his footwork looked fine, but I got to see him handle speed and, and pass rushes which you don't get to see without the pads and without contact. 
So really it's too soon to tell because the coaches were busy teaching the fundamentals. That's what the camps and the OTAs had a big emphasis on. And there were some 11 on 11, a lot of, you know, so uh, seven on seven, but that was run at, at half speed. So it, it's just, you, you can't tell if I'm being honest with you. Um, but I promise you if, you, if you circle back with me once we get into training camp and I'll be able to better answer that, I'll be able to tell you exactly who I see is making progress, who I think is not making progress. It's just not fair to, to, to assess that really um, this early when you, you haven't seen them in pads and, and without contact. So, but thanks for writing in, uh, Michael, two good questions and uh, I'll help you write in again. All right, Giant fans, that's going to do it for us here on the Lock on Giants podcast. Before we say goodbye, just remember the first picks of the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft have been made. Search now for the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and get over 50 insiders, the Odyssey sports experts, and the draft experts on, of, excuse me, of the Locked on NBA Big Board. The five-episode Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is underway. Make the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft your second listen today. You know, especially if you're a basketball fan, that big draft is coming up for the NBA. It's going to be an exciting time. You got to check out what our insiders and our experts have to say. Really good stuff. So hope you'll check that out. We will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody.